interesting. We're basically in it. Zone it in whenever. Respect. Yeah, that's true. Hell lost, yeah. lost files. No doubt. But we're back. Happy power. We got Jeff Perry here. We got Jeff Copeland here. We're with the Jeffs. The Jeffs. So you'll probably be seeing Jeff. Obviously, you're going to see him quite a bit. Jeff Perry is our special guest, and we're going to get into a whole lot of different shit with him because he's just a wealth of knowledge about a lot of interesting shit. I mean, we can go training. That. We, I mean, this is, you know, I, me and Jeff talk, we play some ping pong, but I've been wanting to just get him on here because, you know, he's got the NFT thing going, the crypto thing going, the nutrition, the gut health, everything. Yeah. So I don't even know where we want to kick it off yet. We were already talking about some nutrition stuff, but um, yeah. maybe just a little background. Like, how'd you, how did you, what are you doing right now with yourself? Just give him a little info on you. Yeah, dude, right now I'm just, um, I mean, mostly focused on, growing like little nft business type of thing really paying attention to the crypto market in terms of training just kind of maintaining yeah. like doing a lot of bodybuilding work I, I lost my belt like a few few weeks ago and like i haven't even bought one yet so that's kind of like a what does it look like because we have a bunch no nah, i was in new jersey uh. i lost it so um but yeah really just focusing on like mostly bodybuilding work, just having like great euphoric, just like pumps, not really like strength, kind of just maintaining, but definitely not pushing it or like doing, doing any like regimented working sets and uh, in terms of like strength training. So like once I get a belt and once I like through this little phase, just playing around getting pumps and stuff, like I might have to reach out to you, get some more uh, strict strength programming. Cause yeah, like, cause you mess around with some big poles, right? You got like yeah. a big deadlift. Yeah, 700 is yeah. the most. Deadlift bar, two bumpers, so yeah. that plays a role. Yeah. But for, like, always kind of being, like, shredded right. and then still, like, doing the powerlifting thing, it's always impressive. Like, yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like it. I see you doing a lot of bodybuilder stuff, but then I know I see you ripping on the deadlift bar, like, fucking five, six wheels for, like, right. reps on reps on reps. So And you're taller, so. too. Yeah. So... They don't know. What are you, like 6'3"? 6'4". 6'4"? Yeah. That's what I mean. It's impressive. I like when you see, like, the fucking tall guys out there ripping weight. So, you know, 100%. length isn't necessarily an advantage all the time in the old lifting game. But right. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, leverages get crazy because it's like when I first started training, I was just like, oh, like, I'm so skinny. I'm weak. Like, there's no way I can ever have a strong press because, like, my wingspan is just so long. Yeah, range of Listen mode, to like, this man. Anybody with long arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all kind of, like, Listen relate to, to that. But Yeah, but, like, if you just stick with it and learn a lot about technique and leverage and, like, you're just leveraging your own anatomy for specific lifts. Yeah. You can get pretty fucking strong. I mean, you're right oh, yeah. there with me. You're tall, and you got a crazy deadlift. Um, you got a crazy squat, crazy too, deadlift. actually. I'm not there on the squat. on the climb. He's, he's coming up to that 400 mark soon. What, 363 the other day? A little PR for Jeff. Day. Sheesh. Yeah. I'm like, so, what's the LB conversion of that? What is it? Uh, be like, that was 165 keys, so that would be 363 pounds. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, it, okay. Might as well be like three wheels and a 25. Right. So Yeah, I love it. He's getting up yeah. there. That's Four wheels isn't coming. But yeah, that's a that's a whole nother thing. I feel like everyone on the internet's like, "Oh, I can't do this because I look like this." It's like, nah, yeah. like you just got to figure out a way to improve those leverages. One of which, adding some fucking muscle mass. Right. Like I know the first time I seen you, I think it was like one of Debo's meets. Like, yeah, fucking how, how long was that? Like four years, five yeah, years? Yeah, probably, Jeez. probably four. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I mean, we only like briefly met there. Like, right. I didn't know who he was, but like I remember, like you were like. You were tall. You could tell you like lifted, but like you were like pretty thin. Way less size. Yeah. yeah. Now you're like fucking jacked beyond belief. Like doing all right. Shredded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we definitely got to we definitely got to segue a little bit into like the nutrition aspect because honestly, like it's very very often that or very seldom that I see like somebody who's like preaching the nutrition thing and I'm paying attention. But like the things that you tend to talk about are a little different. Yeah, definitely obscure, not of the norm. Uh, just because I love like experimenting on myself, like I, I guess I'll go into my background in a second, but I mean like I've seen such a massive difference in terms of just changing my nutrition overall over the years that like it, it's just blatantly obvious based on my firsthand experience how important it is, how like bogged down you can be when you're eating like a lot of specific just shitty ingredients, processed food all the time and not fulfilling like micronutrient, vitamin and vitamins and mineral goals. You can just be so bogged down and it wrecks your gut, which in turn just leads to the propagation of like 
every disease known to man. And it's like when you have poor gut health, all of your neurochemical neurotransmitter production stems from your gut. So if your gut's fucked, it's like your second brain, right? It is. There's That's a gut brain connection. The it gets it gets crazy deep um, in terms of like the gut brain connection and the interplay they have. If one's not doing well, the other one's probably not doing well either. Yeah. So I mean, in terms of background, so I was a kid, little skater here and there. Um, probably let's say let's start at middle school, playing video games all the time, right inside like 12 to 16 hours just gaming all day pretty mm -hmm. much fucking slinging mountain dews <laughs> that was literally <laughs> what i was about to say my next statement was drinking four to eight mountain dews a day when Damn. i say that that's not an exaggeration that's, that's crazy code yeah, red dude i dabbled plenty of code red <laughs> <laughs> I, I drank all of them dude yeah and like yeah me and my brother and you know all my friends like we would just we would just drink soda eat pizza rolls just like taquitos like mm -hmm any processed food and um when that was my like when that was my consumption and i still had some like physical activity in terms of like skating and stuff sweating but but it was not enough and um my gut was just always off i was just always sick i would wake up with zero appetite at all and i'd be just like almost a little bit nauseous and and again another thing is like when you get in those modes it's so easy to just be completely unaware of like oh maybe what i'm eating what i'm doing is making me feel like this you kind of just you wake up another day and like oh i feel kind of sick i don't really want to eat that's just how things are it's another day yeah tomorrow will be better right yeah. yeah and then when it's not you're just like oh well yeah and so that carried on for a long time you know always sick in school kind of going to the nurse because i have a stomach ache just want to lay down and you know with all those gut issues is just interplaying into my emotions. I was like, I had kind of some anger issues in high school, I would say kind of smashing shit. And like, not that that's crazy abnormal, but I bet that most of the people that have anger issues, maybe as kids, mm -hmm. they it probably wouldn't be nearly as bad or there at all. If they had better gut health, if they're, you know, eating clean and shit. So I think that's like, that's crazy that you said that. Cause I know back when we were in high school, like you said, all the kids who had, like, the fucking anger problems were the ones who, like, never touched a vegetable. Never, yeah. like, like just ate, had, ate, ate chips and iced tea yeah. for lunch. <laughs> like, for <laughs> yeah, real. No doubt. Like, <laughs> Makes sense. Going to the corner store, grabbing what's convenient, and yeah. that was it. Like, yeah, dude. And like you said, no appetite. Like, get angry, no appetite. All right. of a sudden. It's crazy, like, like, the connection that you made, so. Yeah, Sucks. and it took me so long because, I mean, really, I just, like, towards the end of high school, probably when I'm, like, when I was 16, 17, I kind of picked up some five pound dumbbells in my room, like, you know, just fucking around with some curls and push ups. Yeah. But then once I was like 18, I really didn't start training seriously until I was like 18. That's when I was going to the YMCA and shit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I first started training general, you know, super generic reasons, just like felt really skinny, small, insecure. Yeah. You know, I was like worried what other people thought of me. I um, took any like comments about being skinny to heart, made me feel even worse. So I was like, oh, I got to get bigger, bulk up. And I mean, I was training for a while, like two, three years. Didn't make much pro progress, like, you know, a little bit of newbie gains. But it was like until I really like started sitting down, searching up my thoughts on YouTube, like how to get bigger, what to eat to get bigger. You know, um, that's when it started really getting serious, when I actually started changing what I was eating, because like I would think like, oh, yeah, like gonna eat a bunch of fucking pizza rolls and hit my curls <laughs> yeah, yeah, i'm gonna no, get big yeah. no yeah. shot you're like eating anything's good you know what i mean right yeah yeah Shit, i like, still think like that <laughs> hey i mean it really depends how specific of a context you want to get with it you know yeah. what i mean because like it's like if you're trying to fulfill x need i just need to eat enough calories to hit this body composition goal or this strength goal like a lot of times like that's all you need but when you get into like the nitty-gritty details is when you can like really optimize the results yeah. you know what i mean you're like fucking always diced yeah i mean i don't know where i, I don't i don't want to just say oh yeah my genetics i'm always lean but i mean seriously like if i if i kept eating the way i was in high school all throughout like until right now i definitely wouldn't be as lean obviously even if calories were controlled in my opinion because when you're getting all these crazy micronutrients you're up regulating all kinds of like metabolic processes and you're allowing your genes to like express themselves in the most positive way People think like, oh, I have shit genetics, like, you know, there's there's nothing I can do about it. There is so much you can do yeah, about it. Yeah, they're still it. eating pizza rolls, though. They're yeah, not even exactly. trying Literally. to, like, take care of their nutrition, yeah. the rest, the recovery, hydration. Yeah, yeah like, the training shit. They're just, like, fucking right. looking at their favorite Instagrammer, like, 
he did this today. I'm going to do this. Like, there's no, like, plan, program. Exactly. Yeah. That's literally, like, what I'll be saying about, like, people who uh who have, like, the genetics. Like, bad, like you said, somebody who comes in the gym, like, oh, I have bad genetics. Yeah. Somebody could have bad genetics but play sports for, I don't know, 10, 15 plus years and come in the gym and still be pretty damn strong. Yeah. Considering their genetics are trash. So right. So, it doesn't, like I said, I don't think it really matters that much at all either. But also, like you said, take into consideration what you eat over a certain amount of time and you don't know where you could be at, honestly. Yeah, dude. Because, like, when I was young, I remember walking in the YMCA. There was this uh, personal trainer I'm good friends with. He's a little older than me, you know, more pr- progress at the time. And he was like, oh, you're going to deadlift, like, 600 today? And I just remember, like, thinking, like, yeah, right. Like, that is just zero. Like, just no ha- hadn't even had a single thought about that number. That's just so <laughs> out of concept. There's no way. And I remember having that thought of just putting myself down, like, yeah, right, impossible, never going to happen. Because I was probably at, like, 365 at the time for, like, a single, like, right when I was getting into deadlifting. And, um it's crazy how easy it is to just be like, this is where I'm at. There's no way I can be, you know, that, that great. See it all the time, but see it all the time with consistent action. You, you can get there. It's crazy. Coming from somebody like me, I was told like from a young age, like, yeah, your arms are longer than everyone else's. Like you'll never bench 315. Exactly. And then like one day, like I had like a, just a moment where like I had deja vu and I had hit like 314 or 315 for like a set of four. And literally that moment in my head just was like blinking over and over. I'm like, bro, this shit is like, this is what you put in. Like it's an empowering this, moment. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like and I had to sit down and like really just like go up to the side and just realize like, yo, like they told me I wouldn't be doing this, and I'm here. I'm going repping this shit. So like, yeah. Fast forward to now, you feel me? Yeah, it gives you motivation to just like push even further because you're like, all right, if I already broke bounds that I thought I would never hit, like, what do I think I can never hit right now that I can probably achieve if I push? For real. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the the process of it all is what people sometimes just like. You got to, like, look at the process, what they're doing currently, what they're going to need to do. And it's like, are you willing to do it now or are you, are you willing to do it for, like, five years potentially? Like, exactly. how long ago was it when you were doing the 365 in the gym? That was probably when I was – that was at least six, seven years ago when I was 18. And then you did the 600, what, years later, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, like, a few years later. And that's with, like, consistency and, like, putting, you know, nutrition, you know, putting an emphasis on nutrition, recovery, fucking training, like – you got to be doing all the things if you want to be getting to, like, those elite levels. So, 100%. Man. It takes so much time and commitment. People think, like, oh, I'm just going to come in and train, and I'll just get better if I just, if I just spend an hour in the gym every day. But, like, there's so <laughs> much time behind the scenes that's spent lear- gaining knowledge about right. all of that stuff, pr- proper programming, proper nutrition, then actually spending the time to get that food, to maybe pay the extra money, too, to then cook it. You're up late night. It's just, like – it's just a huge commitment. Listen, people don't realize the amount of time it takes, bro. And like, yeah. they never will. People look at, like, like of course, like, Instagram is 80% of our, like, population's reality. Like, they look mm-hmm. at Instagram and they just see, like, these fucking clips. People just lifting heavy as shit, like, day in, day out. Like, how are you doing it? They have never thought about, like, the other, what, 20 hours you spend outside yeah. the gym. Yeah. The, that's the, the tip of the iceberg. Accountability. The highlight it, reel. Bro, literally, like, that's all it is. It's just a highlight reel. There's yeah. very few people who get on social media and keep it just very real all throughout throughout their entire Instagram page, everything. When you get on Instagram, what do you see from a regular person? You see people going out. They got nice outfits on. You see the flashy trips. You see, like, the big-ass plates of food. You don't see what they eat regularly, though. Right. Yeah. But you just see that one plate of food that they had on the yacht somewhere with a exactly. fucking nice-ass, uh, with a nice-ass, like, outfit on or something like that it's crazy like but when you think about it and you realize like who's being consistent who not when they come to the gym you can like see who's being consistent that's why i love the gym though because you could come in and like see who's being consistent inside and outside the gym yeah Yeah, when you have that awareness it really shines out and another thing i was going to say is it's probably good that people don't realize just how much work is involved in some of these goals because if they're actually at level zero, they're just at baseline, and they're like, I want to achieve this. And they don't, and but they see that in the beginning. They see oh my goodness. Ex- everything that's required. Probably they're like probably not going to start. Yeah, probably like, probably fuck that, I'm out. Like discouraging, yeah. like. Get them out and do, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Get them out and do. <laughs> exactly. Not for real. Yeah, so maybe it's good. These little illusions, like, oh, that's easier than I mm-hmm. think it could be. And then it gets them started, and they kind of get hungry, addicted for more, and then they're like, holy shit, this is hard, but no option but to keep pushing now yeah. so that's, that's literally true. Story. That true story of my life right <laughs> got like into high school bro i'll tell you right now i hated lifting i hated exercise period. really but the only reason why like i did any type of training was because i wanted to be good at my sport yeah and i realized like at a certain age like 14 15 like okay you have to take into consideration how strong you are and how long you can last so i like started going to the gym 
the first time I loaded like a trap bar deadlift pull 315. Love they it. were like, what the fuck is that, Jeff? I'm like, bro, I never touched this shit in my life. This shit is kind of cool. <laughs> and then after that, I was like in the gym all the time, and it was more like a you know physique thing. I felt like when my physique looked good, my performance was there too. And then at one point, like when I got to college, I was like lifting, and I realized like I was getting stronger at a lower body weight. And I'm like, this shit kind of alright for real. And that's how like I started training. Once I got like out of football, like I started like you know trying to like look into like a power building scheme, right? Like no pun intended, but like it was cool because like I didn't really know what I was doing. Only thing I really knew how to do was like the bodybuilding portion, like learning how to deadlift and squat and bench was like something totally new to me. So right. that's how I kind of got started. Though I started, bro, I used to hate lifting, bro. Like I'll tell you, interesting. We used to get in trouble. They used to make us do push ups. If y'all play football when y'all younger, y'all know what six inches is. They just make you lay down on the floor, just pick your feet up and hold yeah. it. Like, we had kids crying back then and shit. Like, it was the worst. They made us run laps, hold books, and, like, the tea. Like, it was all kinds Damn, of shit. Yeah, bro. We, up. Listen, the type of shit that we went through built character. Like, regardless if you was in the gym or not, you had character after you got done that shit. But yeah. that's how we got started, like, kind of exercise in general. Just, like, getting in trouble. And our punishment was, like, push-ups, sit-ups, like, running laps kind of shit. That was what it was. That's but, interesting stuff because it's, like... For it, it's interesting that you pulled through and, <laughs> no, and you're still here to lift because no, yeah. something I always acknowledge is I'm super grateful that my dad never like made made me work out. No, you know what for I mean? real. If That's he like forced me, anything I ever felt forced to do, it like you already reject like, it. Yeah, reject you really it. Already yeah. like, no, I don't want to like, do Like even in school, kind of high, middle high school, it's like if I feel like I have to do this, which I mean, that's every assignment. Then he's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Know, like, you know, we could get into high school history. I don't know, we'll talk whatever, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I feel it. that for sure. You got to find it. You got to like find it on your own. And enjoy it. Like you get that. That's kind of how I was too. Like my brother was really into lifting. My dad even like was still lifting. We had like a little weights bench, fucking little weeder 2000 or whatever it was called. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I didn't want anything to do with it, man. I was like slugging Mountain Dews and playing Madden. Exactly. But they were up there like training. Finally, it was like my brother, he went to the military. My dad, he moved out. But then I was like, man, like maybe I'll just start fucking lifting. Like once right. I started on my own, finally got a wheel on the bar. It, that was like the first little. Literally, like, it's like, oh a, man, like this is pretty cool. Like, oh yeah. Point of addiction. Yeah. Then and then it, that's what got me kind of going. It was just like just seeing that first little PR. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then also like once your body changes. Like to be honest, when I first started, I was like, I give a shit about how much I can really. I mean, I want to be strong, but like. Right. I just want to get jacked. Mm -hmm. I just want to be jacked. I was a skinny little shit, and I wanted to be jacked. That's <laughs> yeah. all. I didn't care about anything else, but I don't know. It's interesting stuff. No, yeah. Once you get that first, yo, man, you've been working out. Everything changes. Oh, dude, like, no, oh. for sure. Yeah, My I first mean, like year being really in it. <laughs> crazy confidence. It looked boost. like I ate myself. looked like I ate the old column. That's like epic. 30 no, pounds in like first year of like really training. Because like I would dabble here and there. Like I was in like gym class. They'd make us lift. I'd, no, yeah, fact. yeah, I'd bench and I'd be like, fuck this. Yeah. yeah, listen, ninth grade year came in, I was like a stick. No, sophomore year I came in, I gained 20 pounds of muscle. Like, that's when I like yeah. really took off. They were like, nah, you definitely running like a, a cycle or something. Right. Like, over the summertime, I'm sure you had like six months of just straight training. Are yeah. you taking creatine? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on creatine? <laughs> yeah. I remember back when I thought creatine was like a roid. I'm like, I'm not I didn't taking know that shit. shit. About Fuck it, yeah. that. They were like, yeah. I just was like, I didn't know anything about it. Ignorance is like, you know, whatever. Like, I just was like, nah, I'm not using it. Like, right. like oh, it's cheating. You, My you mom said it. I was going to die. I started taking creatine. She's like, oh my God. Come back and kill yourself. I got creatine one day, and uh, when I was younger, again, this is probably, yeah, like 17, 18. And I thought it was just like a pre workout. It was just pure. <laughs> it, it was it was pure creatine monohydrate from Universal, and it was like pretty clumpy. It wasn't really micronized yeah. that well. And like I just took like a full scoop, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be sick! Like it's gonna be pre workout. I've tried C4 before. Like let's see how good this is." <laughs> and like I didn't feel shit. It clumped up in my stomach, and like my stomach got all fucked up, just ruined the lift. I'm like, "What is this shit? Like this doesn't work." And again, if you have that lack of knowledge, then you're just always gonna think like, "Oh, this stuff doesn't work." How Had much a bad did you take experience. that first time? I'm a, I think it was a scoop. I don't think I like overdid it because I assumed it was like a pre-workout. Yeah, because like, I remember the old ones always used to be big on like the loading phase. So yeah, it would have been like 20 label. grams. Dude, so like if you've never taken creatine, you're some people just wrecked. doesn't agree with you. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to fucking probably shit your pants. Just, like, yeah. And I took it like just creatine and water, empty stomach type of thing. Yeah. You know, when you're first yeah, not used sure. to that yeah. and adapted, it'll clump up on oh, you. I say, people don't realize too, like people think like creatine is the key. It's like 
everybody kind of processes it differently. Like I know, for example, some people here at Power Build, they're like, oh, I take creatine and I blow it up. Well, most of the time when I take creatine, it makes me very dry. Like if I don't drink water beforehand Interesting. and then I drink creatine, it's like, all right, like I take creatine, it's like my body is like depleted from water. Like I can just feel yeah, it. Some people retain system. water. Everyone retains water differently. Like I don't yeah. know, it's probably depending on their other nutrition, but like. Exactly. Yeah, it's like I never got like that like bloat. Some people yeah, I, I honestly have that. seen, like they literally do look just like kind of like bloated a little bit. They yeah. like lose some definite. I I like never felt that. I don't know. For me, I, I, and this is an interesting point, I feel like one, like genetics vary everything, like your diet, and like maybe for you when you take it, like, you know, that creatine is getting pulled from maybe subcutaneous or the water re like required to yeah, push yeah, that literally. creatine in is getting pulled from like subcutaneous water between your skin. Literally. So like your muscle cells are fulling, filling out, but then you're looking a little drier because like your skin's tighter, your I'm muscle. I'm about to say like whenever I get like a pump after creatine, like I, even I be looking at myself and be like, what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah, I don't, like I don't look like, I know I don't look like that on a regular basis. It is like. steroids. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'll say is when I first started, I, I definitely got bloated to a degree, like just the water manipulation is a little different, but and it's funny because I haven't even thought about this in years since I started, but like, I feel like now taking creatine, maybe it's because I've just taken it so long, but I feel like my body's just way more adapted to it and like the utilization of it's just way more efficient. I don't 100%. feel like there's like wasteful water sitting around. It's kind of all muscle cell. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest too. Like I don't take creatine on uh, off days. Like I only take it for training days. Interesting. Like, I just, I don't know, like, I just feel like, what's the point of taking it on, like, an off day when I could just get, like, protein in, just make sure I'm You got to take it every day, bro. Like, yeah. Five grams a day Stay every day. Stay <laughs> Keep your muscle yeah. cells saturated full of creatine. No, I'm being serious. Not for real? Oh, yeah. All right, well, yeah. Five grams a day every day, training or non-training. Yeah, right? that's, that's the smarter route, yeah. I would say. I didn't, yeah. Listen, I didn't even know. Like, one day, like, I forgot to take it, and I was like... Well, damn, I might as well just take it on days I'm training. So, I, I right. mean, I remember that now for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like the muscle has to stay, like, saturated. In it, so, right. like, it needs to be, like, a consistent thing. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah, and I will say, I mean, I ran out of creatine a few weeks ago. So, the only time I take creatine is actually 5 to 10 grams pre-workout because it's in – the gorilla mode pre-workout, but I'm not taking it on off days. So I'm actually on your, your wave right now. Yeah. yeah. I got and you. like, you never know. Maybe, maybe like if you're taking enough and you're training five days a week and you're not like depleting yourself crazy hard, every training session, you might be staying fully saturated, but you also might benefit from just taking it every day. Like yeah. you're supposed yeah, to, no, I sure. honestly like, I, cause I'm, I'm like super inconsistent with it. But when I like, when I do have those stretches where it's like, Shit, I've taken it every day for like a month, two months. I do feel like honestly better. Word. So I know yeah. there's like definitely something to it. Like definitely, if I'm missing days, like right now, I'm fucking terrible. That's why I got that shit sitting on my desk, yeah. so I like see it every day. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'll forget. And it just I don't know. Like I feel like I don't really get that. For me, what I notice the most about creatine is like maybe a little bit, like a little bit of fullness, but it's more so like in my training. Like endurance. after I'm done the primary right. movement, like I'll feel like good going in the accessories. Yeah. Where if I'm not taking creatine. You know, again, it's maybe a little bit of placebo, but like I just feel like, damn, I just fucking gassed out on yeah, like your yeah, ATP no, like, yeah. regeneration is a little and that's slower. Essentially, like that's like probably the biggest benefit of right. that is like that muscular endurance aspect. So it makes mm -hmm. sense, but definitely, I don't know. Like while we're talking about the supplements, because I feel like you have a lot of like knowledge in all the supplementation. What other supplements? Like, cause I whenever people ask me about supplements, I'm like ninety percent of them are trash. Yeah, the one that I always like kind of stand behind is like creatine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like a protein if you need it. You know, I mean, I always say, like, if you yeah, get it from your real protein, foods, man. get it from your real foods. But that can be difficult for people. So maybe you got to do a couple shakes. Yeah. Um, honestly, those are like probably the two. I can or caffeine, obviously, like if you're going to do a pre-workout as caffeine in it, caffeine is the fucking supplement. Like, literally. Yeah. But those what do you got? The, you you those, probably have a little bit more knowledge in this anyway. I would say those are the key ones, most important yeah. for the most part. Oh, so um, I remember I used to be, like, spending mad money on BCAAs. I'm like, oh, man, everything. Bro, they fucking got me bad, bro. I was, like, paying, like, $70 for, like, this fucking small tub. I'm it's like, bro. Yeah, you're getting robbed on bro, that one. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah. I realized one chicken. day, I'm like, bro, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, for real. Like, I'm like, bro, what the fuck is this, bro? Yeah. Um, well, what I was about to say is probably if you want a second creatine, my favorite is called it's Cordyceps Mushroom. And it gets pretty trippy with actually how the fucking cordyceps interacts in the uh, like plant and animal kingdom. But um, it's essentially like a second creatine to me. I absolutely love it. It's also like a massive immune booster. So any of the medicinal mushrooms are crazy potent immune boosters. Chaga mushroom, reishi mushroom, cordyceps, lion's mane. They kind of all have a, like a slightly specific role, but they also also cover a lot of like super just beneficial health upregulation type thing. So if we'll focus on, on cordyceps right now, 
or let's just focus on the benefit, the immune benefits of all the mushrooms. They all have beta D glucans. It's this polysaccharide, and it basically heavily upregulates your immune system. And here's a little anecdotal story. When I first started taking them, I got cordyceps mushrooms, just like a mushroom powder. And um, I was just putting it in like my smoothies or putting it in my like, like shake, pre, pre, mixing it with pre-workout. Mm -hmm. And um, at first, like two days, didn't really notice anything. Third day, um, it, back then I was somewhat in the habit of not taking a shower after training. And I was already pretty in tune with my body. And so I would go home, you know, all super sweaty post-training and kind of like, I would be able to tell like if I'm getting a little sick. And so I went home like three days after taking this, I could tell I was like getting a little sick. Like my viral load was just kind of increasing, a little feeling in my lymph nodes, chest, sore throat. And I was like, I'm, I'm getting a little sick. Like I should take a shower. And I didn't, I fell asleep that night. And when I woke up, I just immediately realized that the cordyceps was, I didn't, at first I didn't realize it was the cordyceps, but when I woke up, I basically had this like ball of mucus, like just ready to go. And I felt like my immune system was just extremely upregulated. Like when I was sleeping, like generally I felt if I went to sleep feeling how I felt, I'd wake up and I'd be kind of, you, you know, be, yeah, it'd be, be worse. Yeah, I'd yeah. be getting sicker. And um, it was just like my immune system was just so enhanced, upregulated everything like packaged all those toxins ready to go. And I just like spit out a ball of mucus. And I was like, I was like, holy shit, what just happened? I was like, is this the cordyceps, like immune upregulation? And it absolutely is. So That's you, fucking crazy. It oh, is. Yeah, for real. I like, was hooked. Like, you know, when you have those experiences, you're like, okay, this is serious stuff. Hmm. Like, and it's easy to take that stuff and be like, oh, I don't really feel anything for a few days and not really tell. So is that something you would do like daily? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm on all kinds of medicinal mushrooms for sure. I mean, yeah. Chaga, reishi, cordyceps, lion's mane, pretty much daily. Um, you just take them once a day? Uh, it, no, it really depends. It, it's always varying on, like, my intention, what I'm trying to do. But um, the best way to take it is just order, like, a bulk powder of, like, chaga mushroom or reishi or cordyceps and just make, like, a hot water extract of it. So we'll go, it, let's go into, like, the other with the reishi and the... Uh yeah, so chaga is the most potent containing source of food of melanin in the world. Really? Yeah, no lie. And your pineal gland actually like, uses melanin. And some of this is like some of the scientific data. They're going to say, like, oh, no, it doesn't do anything. Don't look into that. But I think it's legit. I think it's serious. So chaga is going to be great just for your skin. I mean, they're all kind of great for your skin, hair, nails, joints, like kind of everything. Um, immune system regulation, like I said. I want to say anti-inflammatory benefits because generally, but like the real way to say it is just like, inflammation regulation upregulation or like yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah no i got you so it's like you know inflammation isn't inherently bad sometimes you need to upregulate yeah. it to you need to be in an inflamed state to repair your muscle and everything like that recovery and sometimes most people are, they're in a super acidic state they're super inflamed their guts damaged so generally you know it's an anti-inflammatory but it can kind of just aid in immune or i'm sorry inflammation regulation overall um a lot of them are going to upregulate, like reishi and uh, cordyceps are going to up, up, upregulate your electron transport chain. So essentially, your mitochondria is going to be upregulated. Same with the sauna. And so when you stack all these things together, it gets crazy, in my yeah. opinion. But like all the mushrooms, they upregulate like ATP recovery too, like cordyceps, second creatine. But it's through more of like a, an oxygenated pathway. So it's like you really feel your lungs open up if you really megadose it. And like you can be in the gym training and, and you just feel like – you can get so much extra oxygen in there and you're getting so much extra oxygen to your blood, your muscles, and then therefore you have better endurance. So yeah. I don't Damn. know. It gets, it's a crazy mess. For the dummies, he's basically saying it could be output increase. Yeah, yeah there you go. Much. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to sum up any <laughs> yeah, of this yeah, fucking jargon. I'm like, I know somebody going to be watching like, bro, what the fuck what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, no, you got to yeah. really understand the game. Like, so I'm sitting here just yeah. listening. Like, Here, listen to this part. I think this is crazy trippy. So cordyceps mushroom, specifically this strain, cordyceps sinensis, um, it will infect in the forest. It will infect ants, right? If ants come and start eating on it, it will infect them. I think it actually has something in it that draws ants to come eat it. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but it, it, it takes over the ants like neurological system and it controls them to walk up to the top of trees, bite into the tree, and then it kills them and it sprouts the mushroom out of like an ant's body. 
you can see pictures of like yeah. cordyceps. This is next level. This, this is, is crazy, bro. <laughs> this is next level plant intelligence here. You can't you cannot disregard it when you when you realize the control that this plant intelligence has over like a living moving being. That's, <laughs> and yeah, so that's, that's wild. Yeah, and well, we don't got no fucking gigantic cordyceps. Just here. Right? Yeah, I know. And it, for, <laughs> it forces them to walk up because the tree, so it can sprout out and shoot its fruiting body and get a bigger spread into the forest. Damn. So it's like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's super it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> so like, and it's crazy to think that like a plant intelligence like that can like control another being to propagate its own survival. And so it's like, if it's doing that. There's probably some plants out there that we can consume that it's going to help us to some degree. Yeah, 100%. you know what I mean. So hmm. that stuff gets crazy. I don't know. I love researching crazy. Yeah, that stuff is like that. wild. I never heard anything like that. Yeah. But that you learn that new shit every day. Mind. You learn yeah. new <laughs> shit every day. Don't worry. It doesn't. Damn. It doesn't have that effect in humans. Yeah, so, I was so we're say, good. Damn, we'll be climbing the roof and shit. No, literally, like <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms growing out of us. <laughs> that would Jeez. be fucking crazy. Damn. Yeah, that's dude. wild any any uh anything else like is there any like oh yeah i mean we were supposed to be talking about supplements right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we all about to say that was one any, anything supplement. else you would that you take or you recommend or anything yeah i mean definitely one of the top ones is just curcumin turmeric probably the strongest natural anti-inflammatory that i know of um like if i'm super inflamed let's say i'm training or something and i like tweak my neck or like i'm just like crazy inflamed from maybe what i'm eating too if i'm eating like a lot of omega-6 like fatty acids just like shitty diet and maybe i hurt myself training or just there's a million reasons you can be inflamed right like if i mega dose that and my neck is like literally seized up and burning just tight if i really mega dose that and lay down and relax like i can really like you feel the inflammation reducing and you can actually kind of reset and like start recovering so hmm. we need this man to like write us an iPhone note and share it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Um, it's also just great for gut health in general. Just is there uh so with the, the curcumin, is there anything to that? Like anti, like I heard it has like some type of like can curb like testosterone production. Is that like, really? true? I don't know. I came across it somewhere. Or maybe I heard it somewhere. It was like something, something along the lines of like, Maybe it has something to do with, like, test production. Or it can, like, I don't know if Lower it was increasing, it. like, <sighs> some other, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. If this, I like, haven't heard anything specifically of that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's scientific data that points to it. You have to be really careful, in my opinion, in the scientific community because there's a – it's all, like, any of the scientific data that's put out is funded, right? It takes a lot of money to push out studies, yeah. And there's a lot of sick studies that go down from independent scientists that are looking into awesome stuff to help humanity, but you don't really see that being pushed. So like a lot of the studies that are getting pushed in your face, like, oh, curcumin doesn't work. It's going to lower your test. Don't take it. Yeah. I try to be wary of. Again, you got to look into all of it and kind of, you know, just do your own research. But I mean, I can't really speak anything on that. Yeah, I don't know. I just I remember at some point thinking I was like, I was like taking the shit because I, all I heard was like, incredible things mm -hmm. about it. like this is it this is like the miracle thing like anti you know everything um, what is it fucking uh brings down like free radicals like this yeah. like i don't know it was like everything was positive I'm like this is a miracle fucking supplement so i was like i'll just take it whatever yeah i didn't you know i probably didn't take it long enough for it to really do anything but um it was in the supplement regimen for a little while and then i like i, I seen something that said something about like lowering maybe testosterone i'm like oh my god i can't right. do that <laughs> you know, sometimes the, the mental effect of like thinking something can like even damage you you yeah, know what yeah. i mean um what was i about to say uh with curcumin oh i really like regulate like timing on it right because if it's such a potent anti-inflammatory i don't and i'm about to go train and get a pump i don't want to i don't want to mega dose an, yeah. an anti-inflammatory pre-workout that's something i'm really only taking before bed or maybe in the morning on a recovery day. So it depends. Um, but again, also, let's say I had a really hard training session and like I'm eating well, I'm really not going to take a big dose of curcumin before bed because you kind of need some of those inflammatory processes to carry out to recover overnight. Yeah. So it's all like, like nutrient timing is really interesting. Super. That's something I, I got really interested in as well. Yeah. So that's another thing I got. Anytime I would I never had any type of like meal regimen as far as timing. I would just eat whenever I'm hungry. Yeah. Supplements, I would just whenever I can remember, I'm taking it then. Like <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, other than like pre-workout, pre-workout, like I'm not 
nothing else was timed at all. Like, yo, that'll get you. That'll get you plenty far because that's like, that's much higher up on the period, uh, the pyramid of like adherence. Like, that's like the most important part, yeah. right? Like the dude who like has every little meal timed out specifically and like has this exact specific regimen, but doesn't actually like put in the action, doesn't, isn't really yeah. training hard. Yeah. Like, you're they're not gonna get as far as someone who just kind of fucking puts just, in the yeah, work. Just, you know? Just goes, so I was about to say, like honestly, I'm just getting into like the idea of like timing with nutrition yeah like rest days okay more protein maybe a little bit more carbs slow burning carbs to process that protein a little bit better like kind of just taking that into consideration when i'm not training compared yeah. to like what i used to do before it was like just go to the gym work as hard as possible and just drink plenty of water and just like figure out everything else out <laughs> yeah. along the way if you like, do that you're way ahead of most people yeah. i'd say that's that's the important stuff yeah we're actually we should make that very clear too <laughs> if you're listening make sure for one you're at least eating two you're drinking water and at least trying to get some type of real sleep every night because like in reality i've found most people just fucking below those three things so they don't even need Listen, to worry about like real. the nutrient partitioning and timing yeah. and fucking <laughs> the, you know all of these other things we're like kind of in an advanced like 100 percent topics right now so yeah. get the basics down first then Skip find two. three meals a day three meals at a least day. At, at least, least. Yeah. yeah yeah then we can start talking about you know planning shit accordingly yeah 100 percent like, alarm clocks going off like damn i gotta eat like we not even on that. We we be moving so much. Oh, it's like man. It's shit tough. just be going. Yeah, literally. Like if it's not something I can like pack with me and just take. Like shit, I'm at Wawa or something. Like getting food. Yeah. Finding, like and don't get me wrong. I got into like the habit of like reading macros and like making sure like everything is like you know suitable so I can still get something out of what I'm eating. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's definitely processed and like you know I'm pretty sure I could go a different route if I just planned or like you know just did like some food shopping or whatever. Yeah. And you'll get there. It's like anyone who like. You can't just overhaul your entire regimen and think like, oh, I'm making this perfect. Like, it's such a massive change that you're not going to adhere to it at Bro, the end of the day. It's like, it's like somebody trying to drop something from their diet. Going. It's like somebody trying to drop, like, something from their diet and they're like, oh, I'm going to just drop it today. Like, you're going to eat it in the next three days. Like, it happens. Like, yeah. our, I don't even think our brains process things like that like if you're just like oh i just want to drop bread and then right. all of a it sudden takes discipline you literally drop bread for like 16 hours and then boom like it's Binge already it, yeah. like a fucking whole pie yeah <laughs> like literally like yeah, it we, happens we can go into something that i enjoy is doing is like is like cutting out a lot of carbs and like if i want to get lean and i want to resensitize to insulin and like my nutrient utilization in terms of like carb and like glucose or like glycogen storage then i'll like do this specifically with my diet but i want to drop the caveat before explaining this this is not like the go-to thing to do if you're trying to do this it's like a more advanced like have fun experiment on your own body type of thing dropping to such a low like complex carb type of diet that i'm about to explain just to get lean is is most likely not like um sustainable you're, yeah. you're just gonna jump right back on and and refill right back out um fill out all those fat cells again so Let's say I'm eating a bunch of carbs every day, like carbs in my first meal, like, you know, from the first meal, like I'm kind of spiking my insulin and like I have a bunch of meals throughout the day. I'm kind of snacking too. So like my, my insulin and my blood sugar spiking a lot throughout the day. And um, when I'm in long phases like that and say whether it's even like maintenance or like bulking calories, it gets to a point where I'm just eating white rice, eating more carbs and like it just doesn't feel like it's getting there. You know what I mean? It just doesn't, I'm not filling out extremely well like i can keep eating and it just feels like well that barely did anything for me i'm probably just dropping a lot of it you know what i mean um so what i'll do when i feel like kind of bogged down and less efficiently storing carbs is i'll start tapering down the window of time that i'll eat cl complex carbs throughout the day i'll also lower my overall carb intake and what happens is one you start spiking your blood sugar less so it puts you in a position to resensitize to insulin better Insulin is essentially like a transporter hormone, right? It's going to send nutrients where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll taper down my carbs like rather quickly, again, just to get like a quick effect. And again, this isn't going to work for every single person's metabolism. This is something that I've trained and like dabbled with a lot. So it works for me kind of quickly when I also incorporate a bunch of cardio, long sauna sessions, um, like a fat burner here and there, or just like any other like superfoods that's going to upregulate my metabolism. 
And so I'll taper down my complex carbs. And what you, what I notice is I start to get flat, like super flat. And it feels like, oh, dude, what am I doing? I'm just getting small because like you're losing all your glycogen. And you're at the point where it's like your glycogen is depleted, but that fat is still there. So it's like you're, you look the worst. And that's where you got to kind of stick through with it. And that's where you're going to feel like I want carbs, I want carbs, I want carbs. But one, it can be really just character building because you're just disciplining yourself in terms of diet to like, you know, ref refuse carbs and whatnot. Um, and so I'll be eating like a little bit of like complex carbs pre-workout, maybe like rice cake with some honey or, um, or just white rice with beef. And then I'll have like a smoothie with a bunch of fruit sugar, like fructose, like simple sugar, simple carbs post-workout. And then maybe a like one more rice meal after that. And once I'm that low on carbs, I'll start leaning out. Cause obviously like you, I'm in a caloric deficit as well. I'm eating less and I'm eating a lot more fiber, a lot more vegetables, a bunch of peppers, onion, mushrooms, asparagus, uh -huh. spinach, just like a lot more voluminous, low calorie food to kind of satiate me better. And what happens is, and again, I'm also stacking like probiotics, all these gut, pro gut health stuff, like, like maca, reishi, mushroom, ashwagandha are like prebiotics. They kind of like work synergistically with probiotics. Um, so I'm really optimizing my gut health. I'm allowing my gut time to rest because I'm eating less frequently, and less large meals. Um, and basically then I'll start getting leaner. And then what, what you realize is once you add back carbs in, you have your first refeed day, you just explode and you feel every single gram of rice that you eat, like just fill out your entire body. And it just feels great. It feels like you're a superhuman. You're like, holy shit, every ounce of food I just ate went to my muscle cells and it, like everything just works so efficiently. And like when you're refilling, like, like when you're refeeding like that, you got to add it, you know, like I add a bunch of pink salt, potassium, magnesium to actually <clears throat> fully fill out and make sure you have all those minerals there that like all the stuff that's important as well. But like just going through those crazy experiments can be super fun because one, you're, you're teaching your body and your mind how your body works, but you're teaching your body like how to utilize nutrients properly again. Yeah. And doing that can be like a massive reset on anyone's like biology and metabolism if they really push it hard. How often would you do something like that? These days, like probably once every, you know, it'll be like a one to two week period that I'll be doing it every like three to six months. It really depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. I kind of want to do it again, even though I did it probably a month and a half ago. Hmm. But it's, it's not the, like, long-term, like, you don't want to do this if you're focused on, like, gaining a bunch of strength. Because, yeah. like, dropping complex carbs that low, like, you can get lean not doing that. And it's you, probably going to be a more sustainable way. Sounds but, like a, basically what you described is almost like a bodybuilding show prep. As they get towards the end of that, that, you know what I mean? Like, In terms of tapering down the carbs super low, yeah, yeah, it is similar. It's definitely similar. And then, like, before the pre or before the show, you would want to kind of refeed. Yeah, exactly. That way that when you're on stage, you're, like, popping. Yeah. Everything's one, popping. one thing I want to say that I think is super important that, like, no one really pays attention to is when you diet down like that, say in a bodybuilding show or the scenario I just, or it just gave, is, like, your body's in a caloric deficit and it's eating a lot of damaged tissue. There's like certain processes like apoptosis and autophagy where you have like programmed cell death, like, and you're actually eating damaged tissues and, and shitty cells that aren't working that have like accumulated a bunch of waste, which is awesome. You want to get rid of those. But when you're in that state, you know, people are like, Oh, just won my show. Let's go eat a bunch of cupcakes and burgers. <laughs> it's like, you're eating a bunch of shitty refined seed oils. I'm definitely not going to talk about seed oils, a bunch of refined sugar and your fatty acid pool that you're building these brand new cells out of is garbage and you're building the cells out of dog shit. And so it's like, in my opinion, it's not the easiest, but if, if you die down like that and you really reset your metabolism and resensitize your biology and like a bunch of metabolic pathways, you probably want to be rebuilding those new cells with quality materials. You're going to yeah. feel way better. Yeah. I'm about to say, yeah, next bodybuilding prep might, you might fuck around be Olympia after that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right? that's how it sounds for real. Yeah. So, Damn. take it into consideration, man. All the bodybuilders listening right now are like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, but what do I know, right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying, this is what you got to do to be no, the best yeah. bodybuilder. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you want to build some quality cells, you might want to rethink it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it could bit. probably be done a little better, maybe. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Why don't we, why don't we kind of segue? Oh, no, David too. just got back, so like as far as like gut health, what are like some of the things that you do? 
I know you just mentioned some of the prebiotic, probiotic. Yeah. But like, what, what would you like? And maybe even just for like somebody who's like completely new to like David has no fucking clue what we're talking about. <laughs> so like, what would you do? What would like be the first few things like maybe like nutrition wise foods to focus on or like supplement wise? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, so I'll definitely get into what what we, you know, what you want to add. But I think the most important part to actually hear is what to remove. Yeah. Because like it's a holistic process of adding the good, and but also removing the bad. You can add a bunch of the good, but if you still have a bunch of the bad, it's it's going to be bogging you down, and you're not going to be able to, you know, produce the results that you want. So, the first number one key I would say is removing all refined like seed oils. So these are all like. Oil, cooking oils that are pr- heavily processed, usually like a high heat refinement process that are made from seeds. So canola oil, soybean oil, Damn. right? <laughs> it's in everything. That's the issue. Is yeah. like, oh, yeah, this is like, the easiest when you fix. Say canola oil, I'm like, damn. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. it will change your life if you cut all canola, soybean, corn oil, grapeseed oil. You know, you don't see those as often, but like canola and soybean, if you cut that out completely and you're only cooking with like avocado oil, maybe extra virgin olive oil, yeah, gonna say, you're going to see a big, big difference. In my opinion, I saw a big difference. So I'm going to assume that you that might shit. have similar yeah. effects. You should do it. So that's the number one key, I would say, because they're super pro-inflammatory. And like the main issue I have is like it's so deceptive online. Like, And there's, a, there's an agenda why all of these shitty oils are in our processed food why there's zero education about it and when you even try to educate yourself it's super deceptive i have this like i think it's a highlight on my instagram still a story i went into but i like i basically searched soybean oil on google and the first like google answer is like an article from healthline and it's like soybean oil um blah 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 you know it's a it's a fatty acid blah 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 and it goes in addition Soybean oil has some omega-3 fats, which are heart-healthy fats. So to the uneducated, unsuspecting person in the grocery store trying to get healthy, look at ingredients, you know, they Google soybean oil on their phone. Let's see if this is an okay ingredient to consume. Oh, it has healthy fats. It has some omega-3s. Technically, that's true, but if you look in the nutrient profile of soybean oil, it's extremely outweighed with omega-6 fatty acids. It's a completely pro-inflammatory food it's not going to be great for your health your gut health just overall health at all and um it's crazy how deceptive like the first page of google can even be when it comes to nutrition um and i think there's a huge profit incentive behind that but yeah. this is expensive We're game trying. y'all this is expensive yeah. game right here like 100 like, percent. Like, <laughs> yo i get my grass-fed beef from walmart actually there brands market side butcher and that's what i've learned over the years too is like there's a few, like in, in grocery stores, especially like the more common ones, like you're saying, like most of it's shit, but there's a few little hidden gems. You just gotta look, like you can actually find some quality stuff, but it's, it's you definitely, it takes a trained eye to like pick out certain, you know, products. Listen, man, whatever, whatever game you got, send it over. Yeah. I'll be in a supermarket grabbing whatever. You, you can get a bunch of good stuff there. I go there, but especially since it got bought by Amazon, it's getting worse. Oh, and like man, a lot yeah. of the, yeah, a lot of the products, it's crazy too, man. You, you see, once you understand how some of these ingredients work in the body, how detrimental they are, and then you go see, you go to Whole Foods and you see, oh, natural, healthy soap bar. But then you look and it's got hydrogenated oils in it and you're like, what the fuck is this? It's a complete illusion. And it's, hmm. it pisses me off, dude, because it's definitely <laughs> some- uh, What kind of soap should we be using? Right? Could you um, imagine Perry being in a supermarket, like in a soap aisle, like fucking yelling at the soap? What the that, fuck? Is that's this? pretty much how I feel. My phone out. I'm like, fraudulent <laughs> soap brand. Don't buy this. Yeah. It's like you ever, it's like you ever watch like Hotel Hell. Yeah. You know, people <laughs> Get this shit out of here. Throw it all out. Never again. Just tossing shit out. Yeah. No yeah, remorse. Dude. Nah, for real. Yeah. So removing refined seed oils is gonna be a game changer, in my opinion. Removing a bunch of refined sugars can be good too. If you're eating candy or drinking soda all the time, it's gonna help a lot to remove that. Cause again, that's refined sugars gonna spike your blood sugar a lot. And there's just a lot of metabolic 
you know, process is going to downregulate. It's going to bog you down. So if you remove those two, you're off to a crazy good start. Yeah, I got to remove that's, canola oil, bro. I got to Dude, that. please do. You're, I'm excited because <laughs> Yo. I'm going to watch him just transform before my eyes. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, Avocado something, oil. It's crazy because, like, the, the, like I, it's just all connections. Ever since I started using canola oil instead of, like, other things, like, I realized after certain days, I'd be like, I feel like I got hit by a Mack truck some I bet. days in the gym. Like, to the point where it's like, I got to take, like, a couple Tylenol to, like, get me back. Yeah, like, dude. You're a mega sixed out, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. So, like, I'm just thinking about, like, holy fuck. And at some point, I was using, like, canola oil every day. Like, yeah, for, like, my main breakfast meal and my main, like, dinner meal, like, they were just being used every day. So, like, I'm definitely. How do you, how do you feel like those? Yeah, so that's generally canola or soybean. I would yeah, definitely like that's, that's what I'm Pam saying. Like, that's what I use all the time. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Now, there's a couple brands like Chosen Foods makes an avocado oil spray, and you got to look on there. Any if you're using a spray oil, make sure it says no chemical propellant. In my again, there's plenty of science that goes, hey, these chemical propellants, it's it's such a low quantity, it's fine. You know, hexane is fine. Just consume it, man. But it's like, <laughs> just consume it. yeah, it's it's a mess. It's, it's like no thanks. Like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I have my firsthand experience. I see what this does to me. I'm good. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, like I said, it's a couple of days, man. Volume. I feel like I got hit by a fucking oh, bus. Man. Like I bet. I'm just thinking about my diet right now. I'm like, <laughs> y'all shit sucks. I'm like trying to burn myself to the ground. Right? <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, hey, it seems like you're holding up pretty well. I don't know you. I, I, nah, bro, for <laughs> real. I mean, like, like, all I eat is like Chick Fil A, hot wings, burgers. Like, I try and like, I, I'm not like a McDonald's or Burger King. Like, if I mm. get a burger, I try and make it be like a real burger. But like. I mean, Chick Fil A is like daily. Like I'm, I'm a daily. Like the DoorDash guy. Like I don't even have to put the like, location. Hey, he like knows the name at this point. He's right. like, yeah, we're going over to Power Bill. People are gonna hate to hear this, but I mean, I was looking at the Chick Fil A ingredients recently. I mean, it's not much different than, you know, McDonald's and whatnot. I'm not saying it's not better, but like there's plenty of seed oils. It's all omega. Oh, bro, 100. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can just tell. Yeah, like you can like let like no, not yeah. all like thinking about it. You can just like tell. You can honestly. Yeah, just, I'm like, not like. I'm not trying to defend. I'm like, my shit is bad. No, like, for real. Like, well, listen, me and you Collins don't look are, like you're on the brink of, you know, fucking extreme disease and you're just yeah. gonna blow, listen. We just blow, like, blow think up, like, but just like, like, we make smart decisions, but it'd be with fast food. Like, yeah. that's how. I'm, like, literally, yeah, that's the I way mean, to put it. I think it's smart just, bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally. like working. I'm probably making it harder than it should be. though. Hundred yeah. percent. I bet you are. Because it's just like, <laughs> like I'm, well, I just I'm not doing it, myself know. any favor. No, yeah, like, like, yeah, it happens. It ha I'll be like, I mean, exactly. It can't be perfect. No, I'll be like, yeah. listen, as long as I drink water, I'll be all right. Yeah, like, that's my thing, too. I'm like, I'm getting enough water. Like, my sleep of late's been getting better for a while. That was bad, too. But, yeah. Hey, one day at a time. One day at a time. One improvement at a time. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what you can add, yeah, like uh, a probiotic is going to be huge in my opinion my favorite is good belly probiotics it comes in like a little it's like either a carton of juice and it's just like fruit juice and like some probiotic culture which is like bacteria and it's like it's it's basically like in our gut right we have like good bacteria that we need to like cultivate to like you know digest our food build neurochemicals and whatnot and just like serotonin feel good hormones all that stuff so when you're eating a bunch of these inflammatory foods processed food it's killing a lot of that gut flora and your digestion is going to be off your nutrient assimilation is going to be off you're going to be more inflamed therefore your immune system is not going to be functioning as properly you probably can't build muscle as efficiently so again it's all like subtle little nuanced details how much does each little thing matter but when you bring it all together and like incorporate all these fixes it helps helped me a lot so adding in those bacteria can be great um there's a lot of like natural probiotics too, like kimchi and stuff. I don't really dabble in those as much as I should, but those are quality. I would say strive for, you know, natural products uh, as much as possible. Good Belly is kind of like a little, it's like, you know, somewhat processed juice, but it's, it's not horrible. Listen, the first um, time you like, we got in here and you said gut health. The only thing I knew about gut health is like something I heard from like family members. They were telling me like tequila is good for gut health. Ha. I doubt it. <laughs> what is, what is, like tequila. People were talking oh, like two or three yeah. shots of tequila can help oh your gut health. God. I literally heard that for like Classic. years. Like <laughs> years I heard about that. 
Like Dang. that's gonna burn your floor to the ground. I have to assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then like prebiotic. So like here's some underground bodybuilding secrets. Actually, in terms of uh, prebiotic sources. Uh, so basically, probiotics are the bacteria. They're the good bacteria. You want to cultivate a, a diverse array of different strains and everything like that um, in your gut. And in order to cultivate this uh, little community of bacteria, you also need to feed them. So prebiotics are anything, usually they're like resistant starches and stuff like that, that the bacteria can feed on, and then that allows them to flourish. So it's like you kind of have to feed the bacteria on its own, give it what it wants. So some the underground bodybuilding secrets is one some of the best uh natural prebiotics are going to be an unripe banana like a green banana or a baked sweet potato that has been cooled down hmm. and i forget why i think it has to be cooled down because then the resistant starches build or something like if you eat it when it's hot it's not really going to work as well or something like that um and then my other favorite prebiotics would be like maca it's just like a it's like a root. I think it's in the ginseng family. I could actually be wrong. It could be. I think it might be separate from that. That might be ashwagandha. But um, I think we used to have a product. I was a GNC uh, employee for a oh, while. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it. And they uh, they had I think a maca root and uh, ginseng like combo. Literally, yeah, they're great. Uh, that's, Adaptogens. That, that's exactly where like I was thinking about like I've been in local GNC or yeah. somewhere and I've seen that stuff. I think like, we used to sell that quite a bit actually. Yeah, <clears throat> ginseng no, I, all the time. Like everyone was obsessed with that. But. Yeah, it's great. My favorite in the ginseng family is definitely ashwagandha because, and again, that's like, like big like anti cortisol. Yeah, cortisol regulation. When you're really stressed, if you megadose it, it cools me down a lot. Um, just an overall, like, hormonal adaptogen. So, like, if I feel like my hormone level is, is it's basically going to allow – it's going to help every bodily, bodily system to reach homeostasis better. So if your cortisol is out of whack, you're all stressed, it's going to bring you down. In my opinion, it kind of can help boost natural testosterone if you're taking it properly or taking enough of it. That's the thing. A lot of ashwagandha products, it's going to be like a super expensive pill bottle. Test serving. booster. Yeah. yeah it's always in all the test boosters, yeah. genics and all that shit. Right. But it's like, it's, I always like wondered and I always like, whenever I did a little bit of research on my own with like stuff like that is dosing. What's like, is like, the, you know, when you buy the bottle. And it's like, I don't know, 600 milligrams or something like that. Right. Is that like a normal, is that like what they normally would kind of throw in there? Like I think so. 600 like to that. like 900 if you're really yeah. lucky. Sometimes like 300. Honestly. But is there like, do you know, is there like a certain amount that you really need to make like these benefits actually real life or what? So there's plenty of scientific literature out there, I'm sure, that says this is the minimum efficacious dose. Yeah. Do I have those figures off the top of my head? I don't. What I do know is that when I buy like a bulk powder from like or of organic non GMO ashwagandha powder from like organic India from Amazon or something like that, one, you get a great, pr great deal, great price because you're buying a bulk powder. And um, I'll just like dump it into a hot water extract, add a bunch of like the other mushroom powders in it. But when you like, I'm drinking like three to six grams at a time of this stuff. And that's when you like really mega dose it. That's when you start to feel it. So, yeah. and I think some of these things. You know, you don't want to mega dose them every single day because mm -hmm. I feel like you're just like putting a lot of strain on your cells to kind of like deal with all of that. But at times, especially when you're deprived or new to it, tapering into like higher, higher doses, like 3,000, 6,000 milligrams, you, you know, you'll really feel it. Like if you're taking a new supplement, it depends on what's in it, right? It's, it's, it's much easier if it's the single ingredient because you know – the, you know, that's all you're regulating. And also you don't want to mega dose a supplement and be like, Oh, I want a bunch of extra ashwagandha, but then it has like caffeine in it or something and you're fucking yourself up. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's why I like, like bulk powders. Cause you just like, there's one variable, it's this. And I get to modulate how much I'm taking of it. And I get to analyze how I'm feeling, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Shit's crazy. So yeah. many like things out there. I feel like people don't even think about hundred <clears> percent. <throat> Let Listen. alone drinking water and sleeping at night. I just enjoy like, so much diving into it all, you know? Yeah. This is, this episode right here is going to be fucking valuable. Go oh, back and man. watch this over and over. Like, go back and watch. Honestly, this shit is going to be legendary. I yeah, so I was much like, shit. damn, David, I don't even know. I feel like we got to go, like, part two. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we might have to go part two for, like, the two, NFT three. and crypto. True, yeah, we, we didn't, didn't even get, get into, into that. that. Yeah, no, we didn't even get it. Like, that's another thing I want to learn a, a lot about because, yeah. honestly, it's like, all my homies talk about it. It's like, it's just so, it's like very, very potent. Like as far yeah. as like the amount of content there is. Oh man. Oh, yeah. so I've been talking about yeah, it for a long you, time. You got like, 
I don't know. I feel like we gotta literally save it for part two, though. I'm down. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll just save it for part two. Just for the viewers, I feel like we should focus just a little Amazon list of like products people could buy. So I have a I have an Amazon shop link that's in my bio. Okay. We can throw that on yeah, somewhere. Yeah, we're gonna put it in has, the, link, the description. Yeah, when yeah. The video drops. It has all the Amazon products of superfoods I take. There's like a there's like a superfood section. There's like uh, like foods that's like kind of like just higher quality like even i kind of do regard as superfoods whether it may be like brands of oils or like grass-fed butter like shit like that so it include tequila you throw that link down there or something yeah we could add that in the description tequila you said <laughs> just another thing for the content yeah oh yeah is there any like super fads like that people in your industry can pitch that are like extremely misleading or dangerous or like newbies and stuff there's like plenty Bro, we could talk about these shits all day. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a fucking hundred of them. There, I feel like there's so many that it's like I'm struggling to find a solid one. I would say like, ah, oh, this is hard. I know afterwards I'm be like, oh, I should have said this, should have said that one, that one. Yeah. But like, I would say you see like juice cleanses being pushed a lot, oh and it's like gosh. just drink like only body. juice. Yeah, something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but like. Juice cleanses will be pushed where it's like drink only juice for like 21 days and like. That sounds fucking stupid. That's how it, it can, is with like Herbalife. If right. You ever like heard of that? That shit yeah. is. Oh my gosh. Never bro. do that. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and one, it's generally oh completely gosh. overpriced, which is the, the key problem. Well, eh, there's multiple problems, but like, and also just like depriving your body of like a lot of nutrients is like that's probably not the best route to go. Like, you probably you may get an effect because you're being so restrictive and like you're you're removing a lot of garbage, mm-hmm. so you might actually feel decent. But like in terms of like efficacy, I feel like it's a lot easier. Or it's a lot more beneficial to just like start by removing the bad. Like I said, adding a little bit of the good instead of doing like some crazy fad diet. Yeah, something just. Dude, when I was like 14, 15 and this Ober Life shift came out, like people were literally like getting rid of like two meals and just drinking fucking shakes. Like yeah. some fast. Yeah, like literally. Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, like I I like I was hip. Like I had Herbalife Life at one point, but like there was never a way I was cutting out a meal. Like I was like right. eating and then taking the Herbalife Life shit with it. So yeah. like I was like full plate of food, long big ass shake, like yeah. and that was it. And I was like just doing that for two to three meals. I'm like, Is that bro, brand still around? A little bit. Gotta be. It's crazy. It's still around, just a tiny bit. Like, I don't know if they got like caught for like pyramid scheme or something. Like I think that. they had plenty of lawsuits <laughs> to sift through for some shit. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I think when we was in Cali, we actually drove by their headquarters. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. oh they're shit. still kicking. Damn. Right. <laughs> yeah, they got it going on. <laughs> <That's> building. <laughs> wow. Uh-oh. That's crazy. That's interesting. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think we wrap it up there, though. We're going to definitely cool. have Jeff back on. Obviously, he's a wealth of knowledge. Hopefully, you guys oh, yeah. got something out of uh, some of the gut health and, yeah. you know, supplementation. We didn't even, we didn't even get into, like, basic nutrition. A little bit. <laughs> That's little probably bit. a little, yeah, little, little bit. Start. We, just, we were just talking about some advanced ass yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. Skip the algebra <laughs> one and two. You're in a cow, bitches. Yeah. But, no, uh, yeah, it was good, man. I'm glad you could come on. It's Jeff's great. a member here at the gym, so you guys will see him back. Again, we this was just the tip of the iceberg. We oh, got yeah. a lot coming. There's the NFT stuff that Jeff's into. He's yeah. really into, and he's got a lot of cool information on that crypto, all, the, all of that stuff. Which, funny enough, like I see a lot of like people in the gym talking about. So I think you guys will like that as well. But 100%. yeah, that's that's pretty much a wrap. Um, obviously, if you like this video and if you like the uh, podcast, hit us in the comment section. You know, leave us some feedback. Leave us some topics you'd like to be hit on, or we would <laughs> that we could hit. Oh Jesus! It'd leave us, like leave like us that. some topics that we could eventually get to down the road. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll, we we'll even get talk more about the sauna on. either. I'm about to go hop in there. I know sauna action, recovery lounge. We got yeah. all this shit going on, but yeah. If this if this podcast gets to ten thousand views, we'll do we'll do a podcast in the sauna. That would be that, sweet. Uh, <laughs> that would Use be that crazy. In the sauna? I'm game for that one. <laughs> that would be any crazy. day, any time. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, brothers. Good talk. Hell yeah. Peace out. That was good. Sickening. Yeah, that was good shit. Love it.